So OpenAI may have faced another hurdle on their roadmap to AGI, as apparently they are now shifting their strategy as the rate of GPT AI improvement is slowing. Recently, there was an article from The Information that basically discusses what many people in the AI industry have been discussing for quite some time. And that is whether or not these systems and these models are truly effective at learning and if the scaling laws and the various paradigms surrounding AI will continue to keep going up in intelligence or these models start to peter out in terms of what they're capable of doing. So one of the things that we could actually see here from this article that I find to be interesting because there are just a variety of different things that are discussed in this article that need to be discussed at length to understand exactly where AI is going. And there are a few things that a lot of people are getting wrong. So I want to clear some things up. But it starts by stating that some researchers at the company believe that Orion is reliably better than its predecessor at handling certain tasks, according to employees. So Orion performs better at language tasks, but may not outperform previous models at tasks such as coding, according to an OpenAI employee. And this could be a problem as Orion may be more expensive for OpenAI to run in its data centers compared to other models it has recently released. So essentially what they're stating here is that the next model in the series, which according to many won't be G GPT-5, but will actually be called Orion, is scheduled to be apparently, unfortunately, not that much better than the previous model. Now, I think what they're stating here is that in some areas, the model does exceed, but in certain areas, it just isn't reliably better. So one area that they talk about here is the fact that coding is an area where the model isn't that much better. And I'm going to dive more into this as we get on into the article, but I just want to read two more points then I can explain to you guys what's going on. So when they state that the model isn't currently better at the other model at coding, I think this is kind of interesting considering the fact that there was also information released not too long ago coming from OpenAI about how they have an actual internal model that apparently is executing code for OpenAI themselves. So from another article, which which is, you know, additionally from the information, they actually state themselves that it says, for instance, OpenAI has worked on a product to handle software engineering tasks that actually might take a human hours or days and to write and execute the code for complex applications based on customers' instructions. But it isn't clear whether OpenAI would launch such a product. So basically from this article in a video that I covered around seven days ago, this was basically talking about how OpenAI have their own internal product that handles software engineering tasks. So yeah, I'm wondering what kind of model are opening are using that isn't the same with as to what they're using for Orion because apparently that one internally works really well and apparently it's actually really popular internally. So it will be interesting to see if this product ever makes it out or whatever kind of abilities that they've got in these really good coding models seem to manage to make it to Orion. Now, I don't think, you know, Orion and coding all that stuff is the main information. Let's get on to that. So basically one of the main problems with this article that a lot of people are having is the fact that this article is talking about how the Orion situation could test a core assumption of the AI field known as the scaling laws. And that's the fact that LLMs would continue to improve at the same pace as long as they had more data to learn from additional computing power to facilitate that process. So basically, if you've been in the AI community for a while, you'll know that the entire paradigm around GPT models, we've had this paradigm of the fact that look, these models are going to get consistently reliably better as long as we have more data and as long as we manage to train them for longer and essentially make them bigger and larger okay and essentially because the orion model isn't that much better than the model that they are seeing now in terms of gpt 40 people are starting to think okay if this is the case, then it might mean that these AI models are going to be slowing down in terms of what they're going to be doing. So this is something that, of course, many people are concerned about and many people are questioning because the entire paradigm is how companies are investing. This is why they're buying more chips. So this is going to be something that is really important for them to know about because, of course, this is integral to how AI really works. Now, I'm not going to lie. I do actually agree with this article, contrary to what a lot of people are saying. I do agree that the GPT scaling laws are potentially slowing down, but this doesn't mean that AI is slowing down at all. What I mean when I say that is I mean that like, if the GPT scaling laws in terms of like just using chat GPT like GPT-4 and just training bigger and bigger models was the entire way to improve the models, I think that would be OpenAI's main focus. But we can clearly see now that OpenAI's main focus is the new scaling laws, okay, on test time compute 
which is of course completely different. And that scaling law is completely different to the previous one of where you're just focusing on adding more data. So you can see right here, it says the industry appears to be shifting its effort to improving models after their initial training, potentially yielding a different type of scaling law. And that is of course something that, you know, does make sense considering the fact that right now, everybody knows that the paradigm that we're looking at is of course the test time compute paradigm. So this is the paradigm that, you know, everyone knows about. It's about how AI thinks about its responses. And this is how the model actually gets better. So I do think that, yeah, maybe the old way of doing things like just adding more data and then just doing some fine tuning and some post training, those kinds of things probably aren't going to produce massive gains. But literally you can see here on this new paradigm, the O1 paradigm, which Sama has, you know, even talked about the O2 series stating that, you know, that one is going to get 105% on the GPQA. I don't think that series is slowing down at all. And I think that matters more than Orion anyways. Now, crazily, Sam Altman said that he did expect Orion to be significantly better than the last flagship model. I still do think that Orion is going to be significantly better than the prior model, even if it doesn't look like it. I still do think that this model is going to be significantly better because every single time that a new model is made, we often do find new solutions to existing problems in terms of the efficiency, in terms of hallucinations. So it does seem that this model, even if it's not going to be remarkably better, we know that marginal improvements actually do allow for a lot more use cases. I want you guys to think about the fact that when Claude 3.5 Sonnet actually managed to produce really effective code, how many people started to produce software, how many people started to do different things with regards to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So I do think that even if this model isn't, you know, ridiculously better, because of course the jump from GPT 3.5 to GPT 4 was pretty incredible. But of course, even if that jump isn't as substantial, we know that it does unlock a more slash wider variety of different use cases that are going to be really amazing for many individuals in the AI industry. Now, a crazy thing as well that I didn't really see most people talk about, which was kind of fascinating, was the fact that they spoke about how though OpenAI had only completed 20% of the training process for Orion, it was already on par with GPT-4 in terms of intelligence and abilities to fulfill tasks and answer questions. This is what Sam Altman said. So the fact that the model has only completed 20% of its training process and it's already on par with GPT-4 I think that is a substantial statement considering the fact that this means this model is going to, you know, just based on that, I'm not trying to do the mathematics here, but if it's only completed 20% of its training process, it's quite likely that this model is probably still going to be significantly better than GPT-4 in a variety of different ways that, like I said before, already is going to unlock many different use cases, just making the model even better. Now, of course, you can see here, they actually talk about how, you know, Orion's performance ended up exceeding that of prior models. The increase in quality was far smaller compared to the jump between GPT-3 and GPT-4, according to the same employees who have used or tested Orion. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens if Orion is delayed, if there are certain improvements. And it's kind of interesting because I do remember that recently there was an article that spoke about how, you know, Google were expecting huge results from their Gemini 2 model, but haven't been able to get the kind of results that they were hoping for in terms of an increased level of abilities and all these kinds of different things that we're hoping to see. So this is where I was actually talking about how the fact that OpenAI are busy baking more code writing capabilities into their model. Remember how I just spoke about the fact that, you know, they already have an internal tool that they use for software engineering tasks that's pretty popular at the company. And I'm wondering if that's going to somehow make its way into our products. And of course, OpenAI are also developing software that can take over a person's computer involving web browser activity, applications, yada, yada, yada. So basically stating, look, OpenAI is still developing their own software engineers in terms of tools. And then of course, in terms of AI agents, they're still developing software that can take over a computer completely. Now, interestingly enough, there's a lot of contradictory information here because Outman and CEOs of other AI developers say that they haven't hit the traditional scaling law limits yet. So of course, if these scaling law limits are aren't hit yet, that would mean that they're going to still be developing these massive data centers. And I think that is, of course, important because when we look at what people say versus what they do, you always have to pay attention to what people are doing versus what they say, because that is going to give you a greater indication of what is truth versus false. Because, of course, if the scaling laws were really slowing down, then I think we would definitely see perhaps not this major build out that we are seeing in terms of AI infrastructure. So them stating that, look, we haven't hit the traditional scaling law limits yet. We're still going to be buying these data centers. I think it's still important. But 
I do think that a lot of the future infrastructure is just going to be put to inference time compute because we've seen that the gains in terms of those scaling laws are not slowing down in terms of every time we add more compute to the model, it seems to get even smarter. So it seems like maybe they are adding even more data centers because of course they know that there's going to be an increased demand and of course because they know that inference time compute is potentially going to become a more important paradigm now interestingly someone who actually works at OpenAI on the reasoning model which is the o1 series actually said something interesting and i want to show you guys two screenshots okay so the first thing that they said was they said after all are we really going to train models that cost hundreds of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars which is what brown said okay and this is noam brown the guy who worked on reasoning at o1 which is of course the model that thinks before it responds and he said at some point the scaling paradigm breaks down so basically he's stating that look even if these models got a lot better with data and stuff like that it's going to be pretty hard to spend trillions of dollars to train a model because it just isn't feasible now the reason i said i need to show you guys another screenshot is because this actual screenshot of this article I don't want to say it was taken out of context, but he actually did respond to the statement here. So he actually said that in the TED talk that he gave, which they selectively quoted in the article, I make the case that there won't be a slowdown in AI progress anytime soon. So I think it's interesting to see that, you know, the actual person who said the statement is basically stating that, look, this entire AI progress isn't slowing down anytime soon. I think we can take that at face value more than what is being said in the article. And I do believe that, like I said before, even if these models, you know, slow down, and I'm talking about the GPT series, not the O1 series, it doesn't mean that AI progress is going to slow down overall because there's still different ways that you can prompt these models and still different ways that you can interact with these models that you're going to get out more information. And you have to remember, OpenAI isn't the only company that is working on this stuff. You've got Google, you've got Anthropic, you've got X.AI, you've got Meta as well. So that's four other major companies that are all playing. So it means that even if, let's say, OpenAI hits some kind of roadblock, it's quite likely that other companies are going to manage to still be able to make progress. And remember, this doesn't mean that AI is slowing down. It just means that the scaling laws are now focusing on a different aspect of AI. Now, for those of you wondering about the naming of the model, it looks like Orion is probably going to replace the naming of GPT-5. So it says when OpenAI releases Orion by early next year, it may diverge from its traditional GPT naming convention for flagship models, further underscoring the changing nature of LLM improvements, employees said. Now, of course, they do talk about a data war, and it says one reason for the GPT slowdown is a dwindling supply of high quality text and other data that LLMs can process during pre-training to make sense of the wall. So now this is where it actually talks about the data wall, which is essentially where in order to make these models smarter, of course, one of the things that we do is we do add a lot more data. And one of the things that we do do is we do add a lot more high quality data. Now, one of the problems that they are facing is, of course, the fact that high quality data available online on the internet is quite hard to come by considering the fact that a lot of internet data is just simply garbage like a lot of the data that you see just is downright nonsense which means that of course in order to get higher quality data you either have to have humans make that quality data like smart humans or you have to have you know synthetic data which is curated by these models now both of those things are pretty hard and this is potentially one of the reasons that we do have a gpt era kind of slowdown and i think one of the things that we do have to you know look at when we're looking at this kind of architecture is the fact that like humans don't need millions and millions of pieces of text to be able to generate high quality text so it will be interesting to see in future paradigms how models manage to get super smart via a more efficient architecture that doesn't require these data hungry models now essentially of course remember how i spoke about you know one way of getting you know higher quality data is by you know introducing synthetic data one of the things that they actually did with orion which was quite fascinating was that they said was orion was trained in part on ai generated data produced by openai's other models including gpt4 and recently released reasoning models according to an openai employee However, such synthetic data, as it is known, is leading to a new problem in which Orion may end up resembling those older models in certain aspects, the employee said. So essentially what you have here is something that could be referring to model collapse, which is where when models produce data, it's based on their training data and based on like their entire worldview of how the world is. And that's just, of course, based on the training data and how they were trained with human reinforcement slash human feedback. And basically what happens is that if you have a model produce data to another model, it's quite likely that that model that you're now training on that data is going to resemble parts of that older model in certain aspects, which, you know, brings us back to the problem, which is why synthetic data generation is really hard because you have this, I guess you could say, kind of family tree of models where the first model is really diverse and then because 
because you use some of that data to train the other model, it just becomes less and less diverse over time because it's training on the same data. So I think one of the things that, you know, of course you have to do is you have to get really diverse pieces of data. And interestingly enough, the article also quotes where they talk about the fact that there's a GPT slowdown slash asymptote. There is this very interesting asymptotic kind of thing that's happening right now um, where, you know, two years ago, there was one, you know, LLM that was like way out ahead of everybody else's, uh, which was opening eyes and sitting here today, there's like six um that are like on par with that and interestingly at least for right now they're all sort of asympt asymptoting at this at sort of the same point they're they're kind of hitting the same the same uh, ceiling um on capabilities now they you know well there's lots of smart people in the industry working to break through those ceilings but you know sitting here today if you just looked at the data if you just looked at the charts of performance uh, over time what you would say is there's there's at least a local topping out of capabilities that's happening right yeah if you, and, and if you look at like the improvement from gpt uh, 2.0 to GPT 3 to 3.5, and then compare that from like 3.5 to 4. You know, we've really slowed down in terms of the amount of improvement. And the thing to note on that is the GPU increase was comparable. So we're increasing GPUs at the same like rate. Um, but we're not getting the intelligence improvements at all. Now, one of the fascinating things that I actually saw here, and I, and I think this is going to actually be a problem for OpenAI, and I don't know how they're going to solve this, but uh, it, it will be interesting to see how they do. But this is basically the fact that like the everyday Joe doesn't need AGI. And it says mathematicians and other scientists have said that O1 has been beneficial to their work by acting as a companion that can provide feedback or ideas. But the model is currently priced six times higher than non-reasoning models. And as a result, it doesn't have a broad base of customers said to employees with knowledge of the situation. So the model is advancing scientific research, but apparently it's too expensive for people to use at this moment in time. I do think that this kind of makes sense because of course, these models actually do burn through a lot more tokens than traditional models with chat GPT, GPT-4, GPT, you know, mini whatever um when you interact with these models essentially what happens is you interact with the model it produces you know a thousand tokens or whatever but with these other models that are thinking there are actually so many tokens that are going on for the model to think about its response and essentially with that it produces a lot more tokens which of course aren't free they cost a lot and so therefore it means these models are six times higher, which does mean that right now it isn't cost effective. I do think, however, that in the future, it's quite likely that these models are going to become a lot more cost effective in terms of their pricing. And I do wonder how that translates to economic value for individuals around the world. Will people start using this everywhere and everywhere? I think that that is quite likely the case, considering the fact that it is definitely beneficial to scientists. So it's gonna be interesting to see that, okay, we've got the O1 series reasoning of models that are really smart and advanced that for like things like physics, chemistry maths and then of course you've got the gpt series models that are for things like maybe even coding content creation literature storytelling those kind of things. interestingly enough some people have pointed out that gary marcus has claimed victory and if you haven't been paying attention to gary marcus he is what some would call an ai skeptic now i don't think he's an ai skeptic per se considering the fact that he's you know built his own ai company and then sold it to the likes of uber but he said, folks over game I won, GPT is hitting a period of diminishing returns, just like I said it would. And, and I think this one was particularly interesting because Gary Marcus was basically saying that, look, at the end of 2024, we're going to have a bunch of GPT-4 style models and there's going to be no major improvements. So it would be interesting to see exactly what happens with the next series of models, Orion, maybe the next version of Claude, maybe Gemini 2. It will be fascinating to see what happens to that regard. Now, also, Peter Willinder, the VP of product, basically said that people People underestimate how powerful test time compute is. Compute for longer in parallel or fork or fork and branch arbitrarily, like cloning your mind a thousand times and picking the best thought. So I think, of course, this is going to be something that becomes more powerful over time because, of course, if a model is able to generate 10,000 thoughts and pick the best one, that's going to become a lot better than just picking the first initial thought. And over time, I do think that paradigm will exist and these models will continue to get smarter. So overall, basically to summarize this video, some people think that the paradigm is slowing down, but I think that even if the GBT series paradigm is slowing down, I do think that the O1 series is about to go crazy. So that means that even if you only get marginal improvements from here on out, there's still going to be ways to prompt the GPT series and there's still going to be improvements discovered over time that make these models more effective. So the narrative that AI is slowing down completely isn't really true considering what we know now.